just shooting pains. I think it's my ACL on both sides. Absolute agony. And I gotta try to get across this rock field. It's not really an area I wanna hang out, but I haven't been, uh... it's worrying actually. Here goes, here goes nothing. It's bloody freezing. It's uh, nine in the morning and um, or 9 30 in the morning i would have liked to have got an earlier start but the gondola ride doesn't start until 9 30 so you're kind of at the mercy of that so i'm gonna um yeah attempt it today the weather is it's worse today than yesterday yesterday at least started with blue skies and by the afternoon then it started coming in bad uh but today it's just uh yeah it's not ideal weather at all you can see the mountains have just disappeared here. Uh, I've got to head down into the valley. <coughs> the only the only real reason I'm heading off today is because I've got a short window of good weather from tomorrow. So today it's going to be crap like this and probably start to rain at some point and well if it's anything like yesterday it'll probably snow. Um, it snowed pretty early on yesterday so to be honest i'd rather it snowed than it rained um which it probably will up here at this altitude anyway uh, but tomorrow <clears throat> when i'm gonna attempt i have to camp kind of close to the pass the weather tomorrow is forecast to be blue skies uh albeit very cold it's very unlikely to get above double digits uh, but i'd prefer to be on the third day doing the pass with with a, with clear weather um, so then after that on the fourth day hopefully I'll be out because the fourth day comes bad again so I've essentially got two good days and asking everybody about this hike and nobody knows about it um, I've been trying to get maps and that maps don't exist about it my offline maps has some mapping on it but it just sort of stops somewhere in the valley it doesn't show the the actual pass that I need to do um, so which is a bit yeah like, so I have no idea how how to get across the pass but in the gondola on the way up here uh, there's this young fella he's a, a local guy I got enough information out of him uh, to make me feel a little bit oh, kind of better that I've spoken to someone that's done it but also kind of worse because he's like you're crazy um, so I've made oh, this, is a, this, is a, this is a hard decision I don't know shit it's almost a toss of the coin moment right now he's up at this he's up here at the little restaurant um, with his partner and he's like oh do you want to have a have a pot of tea and we'll talk it out and I'm like I'll just fuck what do I do I'm talking myself out of it now. Nah. Oh, fuck it. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be wet. It's going to be cold. It's going to be windy. But it's not going to be technical. And I was like, am I going to die? Like, is that... Like, this is the big question. Am I going to die? Okay, yeah, I might be exhausted. It'll be hard and I'll be cursing myself. And it'll be cold and all the rest of it. But am I going to die is the big question. And he's like, you're not going to die. It's just going to be a bit shit. <laughs> so, so let's just... So, <laughs> so, so that's a bonus. Well, it's that moment when the last signs of civilization have just disappeared behind you. And you realize, well, now you're on your own. <laughs> but you've got to back yourself, don't you? Otherwise, you never get anything done so see you later civilization hello mountains hello little river and there's a bit of an indication of how cold it is i was not expecting this cold right now my hands are frozen but this the other thing that's frozen is this lake that's uh it's a sheet of ice over that so <laughs> it's bloody freezing i don't think uh, yesterday in, Sh in shimbalak it didn't get much over six degrees uh, tops so it's beautiful like look at the scene it's um okay it's not blue skies and the the greens aren't like iridescent but it's got this kind of melancholic brooding about it that is a, in itself has this uh 
I don't know, this sort of emotion, this um, this feel about it. It's it's still just gorgeous and enticing me enticing me in to explore further. It's about this point that I start to get a bit of sense of the of what's ahead of me. Way down here, you can just see the little speck of the river. That's where I've got to get to. Oh, that's... <laughs> shit. That's like a... Maybe a thousand metre. So, it's got a... Potentially just under a thousand metre descent. That I've got to do. To then gain... Oh, kilometres. Kilometres of ascent, not kilometres of walking distance. That's a whole different matter. But so far, this section of the track is pretty well defined. Okay, I'm kind of at my first uh, milestone point, <laughs> not far, but um, you can see up here, this is the Talga Pass. This is where the cabins are and the little restaurant is just here somewhere. Come down this trail. It's actually quite beautiful. So I'm really enjoying this hike. Uh, the trail here, this is called Little Tauga Pass, just here. Trail comes down and then hooks down this way. You can follow it the whole way down here, down to the left Tauga River, which is what this is called. And that's really got some, uh, that's got some good flow on down there. Let me tell you a quick little story, stepping out of the gondola while putting my bag on while the gondola thing moves, you know, like trying to get off a chairlift type thing. I just slightly twisted my left knee a little bit. And it was nothing. Well, it didn't feel like anything. But now, coming downhill, that little nothing's turning into a, a pain under my patella. It's never a good sign a couple of kilometres into a 34-day trek. I just hope it doesn't develop into anything too bad. Once I'm down into there. Well, this isn't what I wanted to see because my knee's getting worse. And it goes straight down. Straight to the river. There's no more windy windy. It's just straight down this valley. Hey, I'm nearly down at the uh, the left Talga River. So uh, that's good. I've done that little section. I <laughs> Sometimes I think I prefer going uphill than downhill, especially when it's just like that. It's hard on your knees, it's hard on your body. I'd rather put faith in my muscles than, <laughs> than my, my poor old knee bones. So um, down here, I passed a couple of groups of people. So this is where the local Azak uh, Almatians come for their weekend. So I've just been passing a few heading up and they've just been camping um, sort of down here, there's a couple of camp spots, there's one here, there's another up here. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of them just come here for the weekend, which imagine having this in your backyard. I spoke to another guy who, who spoke English really well, and he's been trekking these mountains for, for near on 20 years. And uh, yeah, so we got talking about the big Almaty, about the trek around there. And again, it's just this sort of look of disbelief and go by yourself no no that's stupid in this weather no and his, his big concern was the uh, the uh, the pass I need to do he said there's going to be a lot of snow up there it gives you this sort of like doubt when you speak to them and you're like shit am I doing the right thing that's two people that have done it that just look at me like I'm absolutely insane and they just shake your head and then like, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right on, let's get this done, doggy. Done, doggy, dig it. Well, first impressions, not ideal. It doesn't really seem to be a track as such. We're just jumping over boulders. This is just a boulder field. That's all I can see. I thought there would be a trail. I kind of understanding why people are like, have a concern. If 
because he was saying if it rains you're going to be going very slow and I thought well whatever I walk with muddy feet if it rains or snows when I'm on this this becomes a big problem alrighty that um that rocky field back there has given way to a pretty nice path that was a uh, a landslide area so that uh, only lasted maybe 100 150 meters that was a landslide that would have come down through this valley here so you got to cross over that but it doesn't last too long and there's a uh, there's rocked cans marking the way across it um, and then uh, that'll lead you to this little track but instantly and it's what everyone like the guy in the gondola and the guy that I met on the way down the hill just saying how cold it is and it's like you've just dropped into a like an ice <laughs> an ice bucket in here or something like I don't know what's going on this in this little valley it's freaking cold it's for a beautiful scene this river here just snaking its way down it's got a beautiful blue tinge to it and the other thing that has a beautiful blue tinge is the sky look at that the sun has just broken out for a little bit that doesn't mean a lot in the mountains that could close up within 30 seconds but it's a welcome relief from the cold it's just warming warming my little bones for a bit but uh this is a lovely section of hike just following this little trail through this forest through the mountains there's not a lot else that makes it makes man happy then a clear river a clear mind and it's mountain air yeehaw so one thing I was uh you never know about when you start off a trek is whether or not you have to carry all your water or you'll find water well, so far there's been plenty of streams coming off the mountains so you wouldn't need to carry any water this looks all pretty clear I don't know if there's somebody here because there's all fruit unless there's just stuff that people haven't eaten but there's cake tomatoes and cucumbers I'm not going to take the food because <laughs> it's potentially somebody that's around but the fire's out Who was here? That's still hot. So uh, probably one of the groups that I met on the way down. Well, I've had a suss around and there's nobody around. <laughs> so I'm guessing it's just uh, leftover food from the, uh, the people that I met on the way down. So it's one in the afternoon. I've been going for a few, quite a few hours now, so here is as good a spot as any for lunch so it wasn't cake it's some bread <laughs> it's bloody hard so um i'll cut a few slices of that a bit of cucumber was up in there there's a bit of tomato and uh i brought my own biscuits so it's uh lunch time ding 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 How good's that? Is somebody leaving their spare food in the tree? Unless there's bears around here that I... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> anyway, I looked at my map. I've got about... Look, if I go for gold standard, which you should always aim for, I want to get uh, eight kilometres further up. Uh, will get me to the turnoff where I stop following this river and start heading up the mountain. Uh, and I want to camp there if I could camp there because then I've got from that point seven kilometers to the camp spot just below the pass but I've got over a thousand meters ascent to do tomorrow if I can get to my gold standard tonight we'll call it in the gold standard so a thousand meters ascent is, is, is a lot uh, especially as looking at uh, looking at things it's going to be straight up the mountain so it's going to be hard yakka 
about 7 k's, 1,000 meters. So then I must set myself up in the best position for the next day doing the, uh, the pass early in the morning and then getting out. Uh, so without further ado, this is an exceptionally enjoyable hike. Oh, look at these mountains. Look at the little um, mountain flower meadows we're walking through. We've broken out of the forest here and uh, it just goes into this wide rocky expanse. But at least I know I'm not going up there. I'm not going up there. We're just going up there. There is no track so I'll just Sorry, my whistle failed at the end. <laughs> We're kind of leaving the river behind. That's down there. And just uh, kind of came up through here. And it just goes into this uh, yeah, rocky moraine. Delicious. Mmm, num num num. Rocky moraine. Alrighty, come to a little, little side river. Doesn't look like much, but it's probably about 12 feet deep into here. But I was tracking up this way and I just spotted out the corner of my eye this rock uh, can here. And uh, yeah, because there's no real path, there's no path, but there's a couple of rock cans around. So you've got to really scan ahead, keep your eyes peeled. Because I can see another rock can on the other side of this. So it uh, looks like we sit in now between the main river and this little creek. So we'll get down into there. We've come a long way, way down there. So, um, whew, it's hard going. It's just all over this rock field here, it really takes it out of you. Like, I've probably got another seven kilometers, seven K to go. Shit, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. It's getting bloody freezing, my hands, man. I really don't think I'm going to be able to get 7Ks, not on this surface. We'll push on. I've just fought my way up this, uh, oh, what is it, Rocky Moraine field. I feel like I was going on for forever come up over the little horizon and, and look at what greets you. It's beautiful, it's flattened out so the river's widened out here. It's this beautiful sort of bluey turquoise colour. So um, I think, I think I'm on the right track. I don't know. <laughs> there's a slight, oh there's a can in front. Yes, right there. Got you buddy bit of a somebody's camped up here before and had a fire it's a nice place <laughs> it's, it's almost tempting You're like oh bugger it I'm gonna pitch my tent here cook up some stew and just chill out and head back tomorrow <laughs> oh, it's very tempting when you come to some beautiful camp places like this but uh we'll carry on I think you got to weigh up whether or not you'll regret it if you don't do it or are you going to regret it if you do do it <laughs> so yeah we got to weigh up I guess what the reward is for me the reward is uh, the experience gained and that's, that's enough to keep me pushing on well leaving the river behind and uh doing a pretty steep up section here that's got the um the legs pumping Woo -wee. so uh it's a beautiful view but it looks like it's just the track now is back again the track is back baby the track is back i got excited all right i sort of went up through the forest Coming back down, and what's come into view is something that the uh, the fella that I shared the gondola ride with 
he told me about these emergency mountain shelters. He said, you can't miss it, it's bright, it's bright orange. And sure enough, there it is just down here. Apparently in the little emergency shelter here, there's a sat phone. And I think he said there was like an emergency SOS beacon you can send out from there as well. It's a nice big open area if you're in trouble, they can land a chopper and come out to get you. So that's a, that's a bonus. But look at this, look at this view. Like I'm just bumping my gums about this bloody orange shelter here and look at this. This is just incredible. Looks like the track it just sort of bypasses the uh, little emergency uh, shelter that you can see there. Uh, there's actually somebody in there. They just kind of <laughs> gave me a wave. So happy days. I guess uh, they've decided to, well, well, stay there the night, I guess. Um, other than that, they're having a problem. But uh, I can't be stuffed walking the whole 200 meters that way. I'm gonna carry on this way, so. Good luck, people in the shelter. Walking through these beautiful open meadows here. This is my kind of hiking. Flat ground, beautiful wildflowers, rivers, mountains. Like, give me more of this stuff, man. I don't need to be conquering any 8,000 metre summits anytime soon. <laughs> this, this is my happy place right now. So, but what's also like, well, hopefully his friend and not foe, but there's somebody else on the trail up ahead. So, they must have, well, they've not started the same point as me because nobody came down from uh, Tauga Pass with me. So they've, uh, they've broken up into two sections, but they're heading off in that direction as well. Other than that, or it's a murderer, and the person in the emergency shelter back there it's like was waving to me like, don't go any further, there's like a murderer up ahead. Because he's like, dressed in black, not wearing bright colours. Oh shit, he spotted me. He spotted me, he's turned. And he's just disappeared into the Tian Shan fur. Oh great. Now that I've put that scenario in my mind, that he's like some kind of mass murderer dude, the guy in the emergency shelter was waving to me to come and seek shelter with him, there's a helicopter coming. And I just waved to him like, Hi! <laughs> I hope you're having a good time in your shelter there, bro. It looks mighty cosy. I wouldn't mind stopping for a tea, but I've got to hit the trails. And he's like, nah, bro, don't carry on. There's like a murderer up ahead and he probably wants to do some damage to you. And I'm like, nah bro, it's okay. I'm having fun on the trail, don't worry about me. And he's like, you don't understand anything. And that's, that's exactly what happened. Actually, I didn't capture it on capture. Oh, capture it on capture. I think the cold and the altitude is getting to me. <laughs> Hopefully that's the only thing getting to me. <laughs> a murderer can stay away. See this makes me think of what maybe Alaska would look like, but instead of a murderer, it would be a grizzly bear. And I would just be walking through here, just shitting myself. There's like, so people are like, oh, oh, don't go to Australia. Bloody, everything there wants to kill you. Yeah, at least everything there that wants to kill you, I can step on and kill myself. Besides the crocodiles. Like, I can overpower, I can squash, I can get some spray on the spiders or whatever. Kick a snake in the head, no dramas. Nobody mentions that in America, in America, first of all, you've got people with guns, <laughs> the number one killer. But you've got freaking mountain lions, you've got bears, you've got black bears and grizzly bears, and you've got gators, and what else? You've got packs of freaking wolves, and, and you've got coyote. Like, I'd rather go trekking through Australia with the potential of a snake than trekking through the US with the potential of a grizzly bear grabbing by 
grabbing you by your head and then like a pack of wolves biting your ass off yeah give me some give me some spider action any day oh god where does this go we're going through a mud swamp see right now if i was in alaska they'd be they'd be bear tracks right now they're murderer tracks i can see where he's run i can see where he's run afoul i'll take the high road well there's the uh mountain hut way down there get in there and uh there's been no further sign of the person which lends me to believe that um see what i saw was like this dark figure sort of hunched and then look and then disappear into the bushes much like that old footage of bigfoot that grainy old footage i believe somewhere in here is the sasquatch i'm seeing no evidence of footprints or anything oh there's snow in the air is that a good sign that's not a good sign <laughs> <laughs> shit i'm with the freaking I'm with the abominable snowman. Does snow appear whenever the abominable snowman appears? That's how you know he's around, you don't smell him, it's just he brings a storm with him. Oh god, now I freaked myself out. Well this is a bit of a, a rubbish section. It's a big uh, rock slide. It just carries on. I have to make your way across here. But I'm putting it down to the fact that uh, how cold it was this morning and then the first I know 6k was downhill both of my knees far out like I've there's a shooting pains I think it's my ACL on both sides absolute agony and I'm gonna try to get across this rock field it's not really an area I want to hang out but I haven't been uh, worrying actually because uh they're both of them are just stabbing stabbing pains anytime i put weight on them I haven't picked my way across this this section here the the views the open country i like coming through the forests and things like that but um but just getting the vistas it's very much I don't know, New Zealand, I guess. It could be Scotland. Yeah, that's very, very nice. Oh, see, I did it. It was about time that some Borat came out. Okay, I've been holding on, I've been holding on to that one for too long. <laughs> very nice. But this is a beautiful, beautiful stretch of the trek. I can only imagine what this would be like on a, on a lovely blue sky sunny day this would be just paradise it's um <laughs> it's still beautiful but it's bitterly cold um yeah so but luckily the weather's actually held out and uh what time is it nearly four o'clock in the afternoon i think i'm making pretty good headway and um and as long as it doesn't rain then um we had a little bit of a snow flurry back there where Bigfoot was but it didn't uh, come to anything it's closing in as you can see on the mountains I don't think it's far off um, but if it just holds out for another couple of hours uh, there's nothing worse than trying to set up tent and it's snowing or it's raining you're wet you're cold and trying to put pegs in and shit like that <laughs> that's when you start to question your decisions see this isn't much of a downhill, I've got a bit downhill, but far out, like the slightest, it's just absolute agony. Oh, shit, I just fucking don't know how I'm going to go. Well, I've got, I've got to go up a mountain and then I've got like to come down a mountain. So... I'm really hoping I just a bit of rest tonight. Oh fuck me. And she'll be right tomorrow. Otherwise I'm really starting to think. Starting to 
trying to remember what the hell my insurance was because <laughs> not that I want to do it but shit if I have to get if I can lift out of here both my knees are shot then I don't know what the options are it's not an option that I like to think of anyway my knees aren't even liking the flat sections now but <laughs> just decided that I had enough for the day and fair enough there knees you've had a, a hard run of things today haven't you poor chaps so um I've got, I just had a look, probably another two and a half K till I reach my gold standard. So the spot that I was really sort of hoping to get to, two and a half K up the valley up there. Um, but uh, the snow started to increase just now. So I don't think it's far off from, at least it's snow, not rain anyway. Um, but I think it's a little race against time really. Who's going to win? Me or the mountains? <laughs> really been um, boosting it along the track here. So we've come a long way up the valley and uh, the snow, snow's becoming heavier, uh, which I'm actually happy about. At least it's snow <laughs> and not rain. So some, um, some nice flurries and it's all coming from the valley all driven by the wind up. So it's actually been uh, well it's quite good because my bag takes the brunt of it and I got a tailwind so what's the saying may the may the sun be on your face the wind to your back and uh, and, a, and a dog and a dog by your side Wouldn't that be fun I love walking with dogs they make everything better so do boobs just a thought. I had it in my mind that I was going to camp somewhere here. But tantalizingly so, I can see just on the hill here, there's a little orange uh, storm shelter, mountain shelter, same as the one down there. So um, I, think I'll, um, I think I'll push up to the hill um, because well, I don't know what's inside the thing. I'm open the bed. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be great if it was heated and there was a kettle? Um, so, I wouldn't make my... It's a bit further than I wanted to go, but... Anything to make my life maybe easier tomorrow? Yeah. Let's push on. I've just stopped here to fill up my water bottles. And, uh, unfortunately... <laughs> That was all it took for the weather to change. So, um, so anyway, got my dry weather gear on. My wet weather gear? My wet weather gear that keeps you dry. I got that on. So um, it's a bit of a mix of, oh, I guess you call it sleet. <laughs> Just a bit of snow, a bit of rain. It's, uh, so anyway, we'll carry on now. My God, this was further up the mountain than I thought. <laughs> my, um, my gold standard that I was aiming for was down there. <laughs> so we've gone a bit further, but far out. There's not a lot left in my body today. How do we get into this thing? Oh, here. Yeah. Okay. We are at 2,970 meters above sea level. Let's see what it's all about. Oh, oh stop it. Hey. Stay open. Look at this. Right, I'm gonna take my bag off. And oh, I've got a bed. I've got a bed. Look at this. This is nuts. This is not what I expected. It's got power. We've got lights. It's got power points. It's got better outlets here. It's got cha USB charging points. That's better than any bloody hostel I've stayed in so far <laughs> up here in the mountains. We've got a couple of bunk beds. Uh, we've got the... This is the inverter thing over, the battery charge for the solar. Emergency, we've got some gas. Um, oh, we've got some some gloves. Ooh, what's going on in here? There's some some of that. And a little kettle, we've got some pasta. Oh, let's check in here. Okay, it's just a bit of... Oh, there's the comms. So we're all wired in. 
So, oh yeah, there's um, okay. This here, I won't press it. This here is your comms, in case you need uh, to emergency call somewhere. Looks like, yeah, just press that button and someone's gonna talk through the speaker to you. And that's that, I wonder if they, do you think? Do you reckon they'd appreciate it if you just, all right, <laughs> just press the button. And was like, hey, I'm just a little lonely. I'm just a lonely dog on the mount. And they might go, I'm lonely too. I'm so glad you pushed my button. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't, can't get a cup of chat, but here we go, we got the fire. Uh, we got a, one bit of wood, some cardboard. Okay. And then we're on the outside. So we're right up in the air. I guess um, if you're trying this in the snow, so uh, this is just better than I could have imagined. This is fantastic. But uh, do you guys remember that stupid hut I stayed in on the, what was that, the second night of the Hampton Pass and that glacier thing <laughs> just on the ground, the frozen permafrost that was colder than if I slept outside. Man, this thing here is fully transportable. Bung it up in a mountain, put some solar on it. This is everything that you need right here. I'm just... I'm grinning like a Cheshire cat. Ah, oh, Jesus. No, oh, this is just okie dokie. Alrighty. I'm, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cook some food. Like, I don't have to worry about the weather. It can do what it wants outside. I'm gonna make myself warm. Might get the fire going, relax. You know what I did do? I downloaded a few movies on, on Netflix. <laughs> So I can just Netflix and chill up here in the bloody river around Kazakhstan. <laughs> okay. Oh, a couple of stats. Yeah, you might want some stats. So today I've achieved nothing, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> I'm actually lower of altitude than I started. So I started at 3,200 at the top station. I'm at, two th I'm at 3,000. So <laughs> I've not quite been made up ground there, but... Um, yeah, it's been hard going. It's uh, 16 kilometers to here, to this little mountain hut. I'm carrying everything, probably got about, oh, it's uh, 16, probably about 16 kg on my back. Two bung knees, one dicky hip. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and a partridge in a pear tree.